Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Muslim extremists are being protested at their mosque in Phoenix, Arizona, by veterans groups who are standing up for the First Amendment, exercising their freedom of speech. We interview John Ritzheimer, the activist at the center of this controversy. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Today, we're going to have a newsmaking interview, exclusive with John Ritzheimer, the activist at the center of the controversy over Muslim extremism in Phoenix, Arizona. Before we get to John, with this newsmaking interview, and his family is in hiding, they have received death threats because they stood up for the First Amendment outside of the mosque at Phoenix. Now, why did he protest outside of the mosque? Because there were two violent killers that allegedly came from that mosque and drove hundreds of miles to Texas where they threatened to do violence against a cartoon contest organized by Pamela Geller. Before we get into our newsmaking interview with John, let me read the news report as given by Breitbart.com, who reported last week that hundreds of protesters and demonstrators, many of them riding motorcycles, many of them Christians, many of them veterans, were peacefully protesting in Phoenix, Arizona, outside of an Islamic community center, a giant mosque that has been allegedly linked to the two violent men who attacked and were killed by police at a Draw Muhammad cartoon contest organized by Pamela Geller in Garland, Texas last month. According to Associated Press, now this counter rally against the Muslim violent extremists drew a crowd of at least 500 people. They were split evenly between free speech protesters and Muslim counter protesters who were supporting the mosque, who were against freedom of speech and police blocked off all the streets leading up to the mosque. And the police had a dividing line, drew a line between the two groups and nobody was arrested, nobody was injured. It was a peaceful protest on both sides by all accounts. Now, the false prophet Muhammad in Islam is at the center of this controversy because he, according to modern Islamic teachings, cannot be drawn. And the idea that we could actually draw a cartoon of Muhammad was violently protested by the two men who went over to their kill, but now peacefully protested by organizer John Ritzheimer, who is a former Marine, who said that he was organizing a peaceful protest at the Phoenix Mosque at the location of the two violent men. And this was his purpose. He said it was not about race. It was not even about religion or things that liberals make it out to be. It was purely a 100% freedom of speech rally to show that we can peacefully protest when our rights are under attack. That's what he said, and that led to his peaceful protest, led to his family being threatened, his home address being published, forcing his wife and children to move out of state, and now several pro-jihadist social media accounts are threatening to kill John Ritzheimer, who is going to be the guest in our news interview, exclusive news interview, but first let's show a short video clip from KPNX Channel 12 in Phoenix. Phoenix police and the FBI have been made aware of this scheduled event. More than 100 people have confirmed on the event's Facebook page they plan to attend. The organizer makes no apologies for the offensive words he has used to attack an entire religion. So I don't even really want it to be about me. I want it to be just about pushing out the truth about Islam. John Ritzheimer calls himself a patriot and an atheist. He says news of the Texas shootings motivated him to hold a protest two weeks ago against the religion of Islam. Now he's taking it further with a Draw Muhammad cartoon contest and rally outside of Phoenix Mosque. I, I don't condone any threats being made to the mosque. But his rhetoric is hateful. Supporters wear profane t-shirts. 
the t-shirt, F Islam. Anyone would look at that, most people would say, that's hate. I'm a Marine and I am far from politically correct. I'm outspoken and I, I, I've just had it. He believes the Quran at its core incites violence, not the extremist groups that interpret the Quran for their own purposes. It's not that some people are out perverting this religion, it's these guys are following their book as it's written. The president of the Islamic Community Center of Phoenix, where the protest is planned, says he respects the protesters' right to free speech. Everybody has the right to be a bigot. Everybody has the right to be racist. He says members of the mosque have been encouraged to attend prayer services Friday as scheduled. We're going to tell our members the same thing that we told them before, that not to engage, uh, engage them. And they're not looking for an intellectual discussion. They're looking to stir up a controversy, and uh, we're not going to be part of it. Phoenix police say they have no comment on security precautions they plan to take for Friday's event. Now, that news, and thanks to, again to KPNX Channel 12 for that report, reports that our next guest, John Ritzheimer, is an atheist. Well, God bless him. He also uses foul language, and we disagree with that, and that is not representative of the spirit of Jesus Christ. I think maybe he might even agree with that. But you know, I still discern the spirit of God upon this man because he is advocating for freedom. Here is a United States Marine Staff Sergeant honorably discharged who is protesting for the First Amendment. And the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter three. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let's pray for a moment. Would you pray with me before we get to this interview? Father in heaven, I do pray your blessing upon our next guest, John Ritzheimer. Father, that even though he doesn't know you, Father, that in some way he is manifesting your glory by, by demonstrating against the violence in Islam and he's doing it in a peaceful manner, we discern upon him the spirit of peace, the spirit of truth, the spirit of confrontation against the demonic forces inside of Islamic extremism. That this man, an American veteran, is demonstrating heroic courage at risk of his own life, his own family, his own safety. Father, we pray that you bless him, not only with, uh, with safety, with protection, but Father, ultimately with salvation through Jesus Christ. Let him see, Father, that the freedom he is calling for is found in Jesus Christ. We pray this blessing now in Jesus' name, amen. We're gonna take a short break. After this commercial, news-making interview, exclusive on PIJN News, John Ritzheimer. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and sign a petition that we will fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama, Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court-martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important 
petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching PIJN News. In the news last month, there was a shooting in Texas outside a cartoon contest organized to protest or make cartoons of the prophet Muhammad, who is, we believe, a false prophet who represents Islam. And I guess that was offensive to some violent extremists who got in a car and drove all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, reportedly to Texas, where they planned to do violence against the cartoonists. And instead they were shot and killed by police. The suspects were identified as Elton Simpson and Nadir Sufi. They were members of an Islamic extremist cult that is perhaps related to the mosque in Phoenix, Arizona. Joining me now via Skype from an undisclosed location, a hidden location because his life is in jeopardy is John Ritzheimer. Welcome John to the program. Hey chaps, thank you for having me. So John, you are a staff sergeant, you were a Marine and you were honorably discharged several years back but you swore an oath to support and defend the constitution. And you live there in Phoenix, you and your wife and children. And what did you do when you realized that these two violent extremists were from the Phoenix mosque? Well, it was right here in my back, uh, right here in our back door. So, uh, or in our backyard, um, I, I just, I kissed my wife goodbye. I told her that I needed to go down and take a stand. So I went down to their apartment complex where they lived and I stood outside on the street with a shirt that said F Islam, waving an American flag. Uh, and I stood out there for about seven hours. I had two, two uh, Muslims approach me and uh, they, they threatened me as they were walking away saying that I could be expecting a drive-by. And uh, so it, I, I told them I'd still be out there all night. And uh, I called a few Marine brothers of mine. They came and stood next to me uh, for the remainder of the time. And we decided, you know, it can't stop here. And uh, we decided to take it straight to their doorstep at the mosque. And um, so we hosted our first freedom of speech rally at their doorstep. And uh, they, the, uh, it, that was on May 17th. Everything stayed peaceful. Everybody went home. But people felt their message wasn't heard. So we organized a round two. And we went there. The media caught wind of it this time. Uh, I did tell people to arm themselves to be prepared because... Not only did these two gunmen come from the mosque, but also uh, two other terrorists were tried and convicted uh, from this mosque uh, previous to that. So something's being taught in there that's, that's hateful and it's uh, leading is Muslims to be radicalized. So you were a peaceful protester, exercising in a peaceful manner your First Amendment rights. You had an offensive t-shirt, which uh, you know, we acknowledge was trying to get people's attention there and you stood first in front of the apartment of these two violent men who died in the shooting, but then that was on 17 May. Then on 29 May, you organized a second rally and there were a lot of bikers there. We saw news footage of uh, you know, motorcycle rallies and a lot of veterans there, a lot of Christians there supporting you. Uh, I know you mentioned to me you happen to be an atheist, but you're standing up for the constitution. What is Islam and what, what are some of the things you were afraid they were teaching behind closed doors inside of that mosque? Well, Islam, you know, uh, I don't think it should be recognized as a religion. These are my beliefs. Uh, it, it's, we're fighting an ideology and uh, it's, it's just a scary, scary thing. I've read the Quran about three times myself now. Uh, it's, I, I know what I'm reading. The people, are, uh, every time I talk with a Muslim about it, uh, I even spoke with one of the leaders at the mosque at the rally, and I pulled out 109 verses, and I questioned him. I said, well, I have questions about these verses, and there's, there's photos of me shaking this man's hand, uh, but he says to me, he says, I'm really not uh, educated enough to be ex the one to explain those to you, and so it, I'm constantly just getting a beat around the bush with these people. Nobody will come out and directly explain this stuff. Um, and as for the bikers and stuff, again, that was really just the media blowing it out of proportion. There was no, it, it was not a biker gang showing up that was armed. That, that's definitely 
uh, the media blowing things out of proportion. Um, everything stayed peaceful. There was not one arrest, not one fight. No trash was left behind. Uh, I commend the Phoenix Police Department for what they did. Uh, a phenomenal job. Somebody should be getting an award. And uh, it, 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 everything stayed peaceful, regardless of what they tried to make it out to be. Well, that's very encouraging. I think there is a difference between violent protest, which the Muslim extremists wanted to use to kill the people in Texas at the cartoon contest, and they themselves ended up being killed by police, and peaceful protest. Uh, as you displayed with great example, can you talk about the Second Amendment? And, and were, were you encouraging people? I mean, you had been threatened, right? And, and what was your response to that? I had been threatened. Uh, I was very ill prepared for this. Um, and, you know, CNN grabbed me, threw me in a studio, put an earpiece in my ear, and just started shooting with ridiculous questions. Uh, but I, so I was ill prepared. I was threatened. Um, I, if anybody is planning on doing any other rallies, I recommend you start up a fake Facebook account and then create the event. You don't want to bring uh, this kind of spotlight to your family like I did. And uh, so I'm re I, I owe them a huge apology because it, it backfired and I was ill prepared. Um, the Second Amendment, it's, we, we're fortunate enough here in Arizona that, that they are not infringing on our Second Amendment here in this state. And you're allowed to carry and protect yourself. And uh, this was a prime example of how the, the First Amendment and the Second Amendment go hand in hand with one another. Um, we were there to protect ourselves if we were attacked. We were not attacked, so everything stayed peaceful. And if we were attacked, we were ready to defend ourselves to make sure that it was the minimum amount of damage inflicted on innocent citizens as possible. Well, absolutely. I say once a Marine, always a Marine. I applaud your effort. Uh, we're gonna take a short break and when we come back, we're gonna talk about the consequences to John and his family they've had to relocate. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending the Constitution? Sign a petition today to defend your Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. You know, left-wing crazies go on these shooting sprees, but then the Democrats like Joseph Biden are using this as a pretext to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. Can you believe they literally want to publish the mental health records of military veterans so that they don't pass background checks so they can't exercise their rights when they come home? Senator Harry Reid, the leader, changed the filibuster rules, why? So he could stack the courts with gun-grabbing judges. Here are three of President Obama's nominees, Pillard, Millett, and Wilkins, couldn't get confirmed, but now they're on the court and they're allowing the DC police to fingerprint all law-abiding gun owners? That's not right. Sign a petition today, defend your Second Amendment rights. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Do you care about defending the Second Amendment? Are the Democrats trying to seize your guns? Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein actually believes that stickers on windows and gun-free zones are gonna make your life saver? That's really not true. Uh, we also know that Congresswoman Diane DeGette has confused magazines with bullets and is trying to ban both of those with these stricter gun control laws. But the Colorado sheriffs believe this is unconstitutional. And, and not only that, it's unsafe. A recent Harvard study shows that more guns actually results in less murders and less violence. And look what happened in England. Violence there soared after they banned guns, but here in America, violence dropped by 30% with more gun buying. Why, why is the government the only ones allowed to have billions of rounds of ammunition? I think we should defend your constitutional rights. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. I'm joined again by John Ritzheimer from an undisclosed location via Skype. Welcome back to the program, John. Thank you, Chaps. So John, you were saying uh, you're a Marine uh, and you you were a Staff Sergeant, honorably discharged, but you're still defending the Constitution. Talk about the First Amendment in context of, first of all, the cartoon contest against Muhammad in Texas, and then your own First Amendment rights uh, is that is that dangerous? Did, did you feel like speaking out the way that we should, exercising our First Amendment rights, 
has now brought people out against you that are that are going to threaten you. Uh, yeah, my we have been threatened. Uh, I've even been attacked by hackers. They've gotten into my Facebook numerous times. It's utterly ridiculous. And uh, if you know our freedom of speech is under attack, and I, I am prime example of that. So I, I just really hope people open their eyes. Uh, I do know I do know my shirt was distasteful. I, I really could care less about drawing a cartoon. However, when you say that I cannot do something or else you will kill me, that is when we are forced uh, as patriots uh, or anybody, American citizen, anyone, to draw the line in the sand and say, no, you're not going to threaten us with death over a cartoon or over an offensive T-shirt. Uh, I don't care if somebody's got a shirt that's got a swastika on it or whatever. It, I, I'm not going to threaten that person with death in this country. Uh, the freedom, the First Amendment goes both ways. So, but it, we tyranny, we can't, we can't allow that in our country. So you took steps to protect your wife and children after you were threatened, but before the rally on 29 May, what did you do? Uh, well, we did take steps. The 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 family's out of town. Uh, they're out of state, so they're they're staying safe. And uh, we're taking the proper preparations. Uh, we, we haven't decided in fully whether or not we're going to sell the house uh, and, and move somewhere a little bit more quiet and with you know a little bit more land, or if we're going to stay here and take up uh, take up arms. So we're 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 making that decision, and we're going to keep that to ourselves. Um, but it, it's th this is just further proof that your First Amendment. If you think you have freedom of speech, you're wrong. Uh, hackers have ruined my life. Every credit card has been charged. My social security number is out there. And uh, they, they, they even went so far as to create a fake GoFundMe account after they hacked into my Facebook. They made it look like I was asking for $10 million, which further gave the media ammunition to slander my name. <laughs> and they were sending out personal messages to people. And it, it was I, I woke up to it. I woke up in the morning and I, I went on my phone and I'm looking at all these posts and I'm like, I didn't say this. I haven't said this. I haven't messaged this. I didn't create this. What's going on? And uh, so it again and and in the comment section of wherever this video is going to be shared, I will post the link. It, there's no more damage that they can do to me now. Now that it's all out there, it's on a quick leak website. And uh, I'll even share share a link. You want to get to know me? You'll see my name. You'll see my social. Every address I've lived at. Every phone number I've had. Every email I've had. You will see every nook and cranny about me. Even my mother's maiden name. Well, besides so, publishing uh, your credit card numbers, which I think is fraud or at least conspiracy to let other people falsely charge your finances, they published your home address where your wife and children were living. It, what do you think their intent is? Do you think they're, you know, trying to call upon some of those people who threatened you to go to your house? Right. They're they're definitely here in America. Uh, they just there was another attempt. What was it in Boston? They're tr they're trying to behead Pam Geller, and that that barely got any media attention. The the Muslim woman that was upset that she was given a can of soda on an airplane that was open is getting more attention rather than uh, these guys that just tried and plotted to uh, behead Pam Geller. Uh, so they, they did publish my address and again, we're here, we're, uh, you know, it, we'll be ready for them if that came to it, but we're most likely going to relocate. I don't know though. So they, they are, they, ISIS tweeted my address, they put a fatwa on my head and uh, we'll see what happens. Now, Pamela Geller is the Christian activist who speaks against Islam, and she organized the Texas Cartoon Contest. Have you been in touch with her or her organization? No, uh, my mother has been in touch with her. My mother's been emailing with her back and forth. Um, I've been talking with uh, Jan Morgan. Uh, she's a huge Second Amendment activist, and she's a, a phenomenal weapons trainer. Hopefully, I can get her to... Um, you know, give my wife some classes and uh, my children will definitely be brought up uh, knowing how to shoot, so. Well, I pray that you stay in the activist mindset. You have a passion for defending the Constitution. You've put your own safety on the line uh, and we pray for your safety, honestly, John. We pray in Jesus' name that you are blessed and favored of God and that God will put his angels around you and your family to protect you from violent extremists. 
Thank you for what you've done. You're gonna have a website stood up. I know it's still under construction, but mention your website. Uh, www.rogueinfidel.com, currently under construction. And uh, yep, we will have uh, apparel for sale on there and just continuing the uh, movement about exposing the truth about Islam and uh, also just d really defending this constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I see the beginning of a career in the making here. Our guest has been John Ritzheimer. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, chaps, I really appreciate it. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with a closing word. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Our thanks again to John Ritzheimer for that wonderful interview. You know, we need to continue to uplift him and his family in prayer. And we do pray for his safety, uh, but we also need the ability to bring you these newsmaking interviews on PIJN News. Would you help us with a donation today? Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. And if you would also call us, call our prayer line if you want prayer at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. I don't take a dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit, but if you donate today, then we will uh, be able to expand our TV audience, reach more viewers, and ultimately uh, bring America to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't just report the news, we pray the news in Jesus' name, and I'm glad that you watched this show. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.